What's happening, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Saturday, December 16th. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. My girlfriend actually just made a killer smoothie. It was a pina colada inspired one. It was absolutely delicious, but diving into another edition of rapid fire news updates. This is going to be for the period December 9th to December 15th. And as a reminder, this isn't to go into deep dive details or anything like that. It's basically just to go over a high level overview of all the pertinent information that transpired over the last week or so, all in about 10 to 15 minutes. But before we get to that, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. You can take the bell if you're new, subscribe, all that stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. I really do love you all who've supported me along the way. Also, you can give us a follow over on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow, and we recently signed up for Rumble and Odyssey platforms as well, in case we ever get shut off on YouTube. Diving right into the news for the past week, FDA considered state data in MJ rescheduling documents show. So the Food and Drug Administration considered data regarding MJ's medical value submitted by U.S. states with legal MJ programs when determining how the drug should be federally classified. Until now, federal officials have revealed very little about the Drug Enforcement Administration's review process in response to the HHS recommendation of Schedule 3. So we should see some movement. This is a big topic right now, obviously, rescheduling. And like I said, I, I didn't think I was in the camp of thinking it was more than likely going to be in Q1, Q2 2024 when we get some sort of progress and movement on this, but obviously the biggest catalyst on the horizon for the for the industry uh, right now. And like I said, this is going to be monumental. If we can get 280E go away, oh man, just think of the amount of money that would be hitting these bottom lines, right? Especially the, you know, the US operators. It's not going to really benefit the LPs, but it's going to be, you know, the LPs trade as a proxy to that, right? When hype returns, when euphoria returns, a lot of people cannot buy I know tons of people in the U.S. that can't even buy U.S. listed names because they're on Canadian exchanges or their broker doesn't support OTC, right? Then there's people from you know Europe and whatnot that can only buy NASDAQ listed names, right? So lots of catalysts on the horizon, but rescheduling, obviously the biggest one. Landmark Netherlands MJ experiment set to begin this week as well. So Netherlands MJ cultivation and distribution experiment is set to kick off on Friday, and this was from December 11th. So... The executives are calling a milestone for the industry in Europe, even though supply chain trial is starting years later than originally planned. So again, game theory playing out, more and more countries starting to embrace medicine of the future. Why was the Ontario MJ store sitting on $500 million in cash? So they go on to talk about uh, the Ontario's government-owned MJ wholesaler was sitting on more than $500 million Canadian dollars in cash earlier this year, but officials have declined to spell out why the Ontario MJ store held onto that much money rather than remit some of it back to provincial government earlier. So this was an interesting article. But uh, yeah, the the government, especially the federal government, right, is the biggest creditor right now for the MJ industry. And basically, you know, all these MJ companies are working for their governments because there's such high excise taxes. Uh, you know, 280E, there's some companies like Cureleaf that said that they paid over $350 million and that was a while ago. So it's probably a lot higher than that now. But essentially, uh, I think they said they would save about $150 million each year if 280E goes away. So just imagine that, that extra $150 million a year hitting their bottom line, right? So this is this is a high cash flowing industry, right? This This industry is just being, you know, held back right now. But like I said, eventually the shackles will be unleashed and eventually... 280E will go away. And like I said, I think the next couple of years, I would say next two to three years, MJ is probably going to be the most attractive investment and asset class out there. Also, Scott's Miracle Grows struggling Hawthorne seeks MJ M&A deals. So Scott's Miracle Grows audacious 1.7 billion foray into the MJ business over the past decade is a sensitive topic for the father-son team whose family based, whose family helped build the lawn and garden giant. So CEO Jim Hagerdorn told MJ Biz Daily the hundreds of layoffs and debt saddling to Ohio's company's MJ subsidiary Hawthorne, Hawthorne Gardening Co. almost took Scott's down. So again, struggles continue. Uh, but like I said, I think better times are ahead. And yes, I do agree that there's still a lot of M&A uh, mergers and acquisitions and consolidation needed in the space. But this is just another example of some of the struggles that the industry has had. Also, Israeli MJ patients surge, but new rules face delay. So again, this is another going to be another important 
uh, market in the world of MJ as well. Uh, Australia, we know we have Germany coming online. Uh, like I said, there's tons of game theories playing out, right? We know that uh, we're starting to see this landmark Netherlands MJ experiment as well. So again, Thailand, like some of the one of the most strictest you know countries in the world, uh, starting to embrace it as well. Also, Cureleaf begins adult use wholesale operations in New York. So I'm very very bullish on Cureleaf. Actually, going to be doing a video here right after this one, and uh, got some awesome comments from Boris Jordan, the executive chairman and co-founder, and then uh, the CEO as well. So stay tuned for that. But that's going to be another massive market. And then obviously Florida with potential for being on the ballot for 2024 and adult use sales commencing at some point over the next year or two. Uh, Ohio coming online, Pennsylvania. We're going to see massive, massive uh, opportunities in some of these states. But I, I think that New York and Florida are going to be the biggest. Also, CB Sciences Inc. acquires cultured foods to enter plant-based food market, opening door for European distribution. We also had Connecticut sales of Legal MJ set new monthly record in November. So in November, set a new record with nearly 25.7 million in total sales for the month. That figure includes 15.4 million in sales to adult consumers, the highest amount since recreational uh, since the recreational market opened in January. Also, Ohio lawmakers take up House lawmakers take up GOP bill to amend voter approved MJ law as alternate alternative to Senate overhaul. So they're running out of time here, but Ohio, I don't think there's any anything to worry about. Um, Ohio is going to be another very important market as well. Uh, but And they were Republican-controlled. They were a Republican-dominated state. So if it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. Just look at, you know, uh, Thailand. And, you know, eventually it's just a matter of time before everybody capitulates and jumps on board with the medicine of the future <laughs> train. So, yeah, the train has left the station, right? There's no, there's no turning back. It's just only only up from here and I can't wait to show you that video as well with Cureleaf talks about how uh, it's a return to growth and I could not agree more I think 2024 is going to be MJ's year also MJ advocacy group normal who I've interviewed multiple times Morgan Fox the political director is shutting down in South Carolina so after seven years the group has lost four board members including its treasurer this year making it difficult for the group to continue its work founder Scott Weldon told the post so Weldon said the group was fined $2,000 after it continued fundraising after failing to renew its nonprofit status. I had to make the decision, Weldon, who is part ranger and podcaster, told the newspaper. DEA places six cannabinoids in temporary Schedule 1. So the DEA, food, uh, the Administrator of Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, has issued a temporary order to Schedule six synthetic cannabinoids in schedule one under the Controlled substances act so uh, this is something that we needed to do i think this is a, a smart move right uh, these synthetic versions of cannabinoids uh, it's basically imminent hazard and public safety avoidance so uh, i would agree i mean synthetic cannabinoids we just don't know to the degree right that uh, these are safe um but We'll see what comes out of this, but I, I've actually tried some synthetic uh, cannabinoids in the past, and it was kind of weird. Um, if anybody has tried any, let me know, but it was, I can't remember where I was. I think it was in like Mexico or something like that, and somebody had uh, had a vape, and I tried it, and it was almost like I had smoked MJ for the very first time, um, but I didn't feel very good after. I forget what they called it, um, but if anybody has tried any of those, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Also, Arizona weed sales exceed 1 billion in 2023. Arizona MJ retailers have already rung up more than 1 billion in weed sales this year, according to the data from the state's Department of Revenue. Massive. MJ MSO Cureleaf will list on the Toronto Stock Exchange on Thursday. So this was from December 13th. So they did commence trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange, which is another monumental step and milestone for the company. But, you know, Terrace End obviously leading the way and then Cureleaf, and this is probably going to be a trend that continues. But ultimately, this is this is what we want to see, a step in the right direction. We'll get uplisted to the major Canadian exchanges. And then what do you think is next? Probably the major U.S. capital markets. Also, Canopy Growth announced share consolidation at a ratio of 10 for 1. So I did a video on this as well. Uh, you can check that out for more details on that. We knew it was probably coming. I was a little bit surprised. I thought they would try to seek a 180-day extension and then try to regain it, regain 
compliance organically with all the catalysts, catalysts on the horizon, but uh, I think it was more of a play by market makers to dip the stock one more time so that they could load up on the cheap before they know massive, massive growth and uh, turnaround is coming for the sector. Also, an interesting article here from BNN Bloomberg, beer, wine, coming to Ontario corner stores by 2026, Premier announces. I mean, this has pretty much been in Quebec at corner stores, beer and wine since forever. Uh, I'm not sure when it began, but like I said, it's pretty much forever ago. Um, I think this is a long time coming and something, I, mean, I was surprised it would be by 2026, to be honest, but here in Alberta, it's privatized and there's literally like an MJ, or there's an MJ store and an alcohol store literally like on every corner. They're more, they're more popular than an actual convenience store so it, it's to me, it makes absolutely no sense why we don't have MJ and uh, why don't we have beverages for MJ and alcohol in corner stores. It doesn't really make any sense. We already see them everywhere anyway, and they're just going to do the same thing they do for cigarettes and whatnot, right? Lottery tickets, you got to be a certain age to buy them. So I, I don't see why it's taken this long, but this is obviously massive for the industry as well. Obviously, Tilray is going to be a bene big beneficiary of this and then just kind of paves the way of what we could expect in terms of MJ products as well. But I think that's probably three to five years out before we see any movement on that. But we'll see. We'll see how many companies lobby the government as well. But New York regulators issue first MJ product recall. So the product Jenny's ZZ Gummies were sold through licensed MJ dispensaries throughout the New York state. And the Office of MJ Management, OCM, said Tuesday in announcing the recall. So did not undergo the required testing for consumer safety and product quality. Also, Colombian Senate shelves MJ legalization bill and another major setback for advocates. But like I said, the movement is happening and it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of if, but when. Also, Colombia's president says that senators who blocked MJ legalization bill are only helping cartels perpetuating violence, which I would agree, right? We need to uh, keep our citizens and our streets safe and combat the illicit market and by prohibiting this and prolonging this prohibition it's only going to perpetuate that i would agree 100 percent also florida could issue 22 more mj licenses in six months says the regulator and like i said we could potentially see florida on the ballot for 2024 i think there's a very very high chance of that passing also new york governor announced a state will open a dozen new mj shops by year's end and we have c21 sees revenue drop in third quarter this is a name that uh, I don't follow that much, but uh, definitely a smaller producer. C21's revenue fell sequentially by 3.9% to 6.8 million and was below last year's revenue of 7.2 million. In other news, Pennsylvania governor expected to okay medical MJ expansion. We also had retiring Blumenauer reflect, reflects on his MJ advocacy and makes a bold prediction. So let's go through this here down to the end. So here it is. As he prepares to leave office next year, Blumenauer said his, his MJ advocacy has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in 54 years. And I don't say this lightly, but I think I helped transform the society. He also doesn't even smoke. But he said, we're not done yet. We're going to get it across the finish line. Blumenauer then made a prediction that 50 years ago might have been seen as absurd and in the era of congressional stalemates feels bold. The 2020s are when federal legalization finally happens. I think this is the decade, he said. This is the decade of decision. And I couldn't agree more. I think uh, I think a lot of people don't think it's going to happen ever. Um, but I think it's a lot closer to happening than uh, I think it's going to happen sooner than later. Also, national MJ legalization would grow tax revenue to $8.5 billion with a B for all states. Think tank estimates uh, estimates in new estimates in new taxation blueprint and think of the jobs right that this is going to create and we're heading for well lots arguing that we're already in a recession i would say that we're heading for a major recession if not a depression and i think that you know this industry is going to be relied upon heavily uh, to generate you know more opportunities more jobs more taxation um, as we look to troubling times ahead in the economy also mj beats booze says new report from td cohen so a new report from TD Cohen analyst Vivian Azer said legal MJ is driving consumers away from alcohol. And this is going to be a trend that continues. But obviously, alcohol is going to have its place. It's never going to go away. Um, but, you know, this is a healthier alternative. Um, it actually has medical benefits, right? We have uh, it helps with sleep and uh, epilepsy, helps with anxiety, PTSD. And then it's a, also a good alternative for recreational, right? So um, I think this is going to be a trend that is not going to slow 
at any point in the near future. Also, Carnival Cruise Lines denies that anti-MJ enforcement measures are meant to boost alcohol sales on ships. Well, I don't know how much I believe that. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this and the rest of this news. But going into there, like I said, I hope you're having a great weekend. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Going into there, it's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. And we'll see you again on the next video.